Hi everyone, it's Wednesday, August 16th. Welcome back, another vlog, here we go. Um, I'm just sat actually editing the previous vlog. So strange to talk to you from the future that then becomes the past, or yeah, digital time. It's crazy. Another official day off today. Been craving it. Uh, and needing it. So yeah, I had a coffee with a friend this morning where we talked about actually like it was a tiny bit of a business meeting because she wanted to meet about like an idea for a project um, that she wants to make. And ooh, I'm excited. Art collective vibes. So that was that actually like really made my morning like just to sit with a friend who's so, she's a musician, she's so good at what she does, and it's just like really exciting to think about collaborating with her, which I've done already once in the past for something that, um, that I was making. And so to kind of continue that artistic conversation, but like in a collective with like few of us can be just exactly really what I'm looking for. And kind of the thing that I was looking to do more of as I leave my full-time dancing job. So that was wonderful. And part of that was um, that the inspiration for the project is based on a short story. It does give me something to read, which is great. And then I'm also gonna read um, in this video, I think, more Medea by Euripides, the new version by Rachel Cusk, which is my August book club pick. Um, so this is another announcement. If you didn't already know and you want to read it, you can pick it up. It's skinny, it's short, it's a play, so you'll read it really fast. Of course, we'll have a conversation about it either on Instagram or here in the comments or whatever, but I am officially running the book club on Patreon. Anyways, so I'm gonna finish editing the previous video. Jacob is here accompanying me. He loves to find any slightly sunny patch and just bathe in it. I'm looking out at these wonderful trees. Got myself sat up. Uh, I've got myself sat here in this like kind of setup. That's not a real desk. There's a real desk there, but this is nice because it's at the window. Mm, okay, welcome to a new vlog. Oh, I just wanted to share with you that I made myself a Greek salad. Very important to have feta if you eat cheese. Just have like feta and vegetables in your, um, I was gonna say in your closet, in your refrigerator at all <laughs> times during the summer because there's nothing as satisfying as a fucking Greek salad in the summertime. I did want to share one thing as I was just reflecting on my day so far and thinking about what's interesting to tell you. And just to be open and share that like, Depression hit me pretty hard this morning, um, and I already felt it yesterday. I can start to feel it physically in my body, like a certain blanket heaviness that starts to come over me, and I could feel that yesterday. And then this morning, I just, yeah, like woke up thinking about my dad, and um, for those of you that are new here, I lost my dad this year in February and yeah, it just was really hard for me this morning and I just really had a, you know, fucking breakdown in the morning. And yeah, I don't know if anyone needs to hear this. I'm sure that there's someone that lands on this video that this could pertain to, but you know, sometimes you can be doing fine for like, even weeks and then one random morning you wake up and like you can't fucking function and it, you are doing really bad um and that in itself is okay um as surprising like as it is and as hard as it is it's just like if anyone needs to hear that i understand and it's okay to just be there in the most unexpected times. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share that, that that was, that was part of my 
day to day and you know on days like that I feel like I have two choices which one is to like sink under which is to kind of like go really go into it um and I don't think that that's a bad thing and I don't think that that should always be avoided I think sometimes I need that um and and the other option is like to go through the that rough moment and then like to put myself back in the world in the outside world um which I just chose to do today because I was meeting that friend of mine and I'm really glad that I went to meet her um but at the same time you know there have been other possibilities of things to do with my day today and I decided to like let those things go and come back home and like be by myself and spend some time by myself with my dog um that's all um bon appetit mm -hmm. mm. Hi everyone, it's Sunday. Excuse my appearance. I am so sweaty. It's 32 degrees outside and it's horrible. You can die, literally. Um, I was teaching a class this morning, so I'm just like super sweaty and just like literally a wet rat. Um, but I wanted to just say hello and start vlogging more. I did some book shopping today, but not for myself. I did only for gifts. Um, a friend of mine, really good friend of mine and colleague, she had a birthday this past week and she's never read Rachel Cusk. So I got her and she reads in Hebrew. So I went to the bookstore to buy her a copy of the Hebrew translation of Outline. So I'm gonna give that to her and I'm really excited for her to read it because she's been hearing me speak about Rachel Cusk forever and she's like, she wrote me the other day, is Rachel Cusk the author that you keep talking about? And I was like, yes, but don't buy a book of hers because I'm gonna buy you a book of hers. And then of course, while I was there, um, the woman that works there is actually so sweet and she used to live in New York and, but she's also Israeli and she's um, like an illustrator. So, but she has really good taste and she also like really knows my taste and every time I come in there she is recommending me things based on like books that I've bought in the past or that we've spoken about and like she would be one of the people we would love to watch on booktube because she has that kind of reading taste that's like very much um in line with what I read and what probably a lot of you read if you if you watch me um, and she's always opening my mind to a lot of things and a lot of graphic novels because she is an illustrator and she actually gave me at the end, um, a little copy of like a kind of zine type graphic novel that she wrote, um, called Puppet School Homework, really gorgeous illustrator. And she started taking puppet and clowning classes to just help her through a really intense time living in this country. It's like super, as I'm sure you know, politically and socially volatile right now. And she said that that's the only thing that's helping her is going to clowning classes, which I thought was amazing. So she, uh, but anyway, she is a really beautiful um, illustrator. So she gave me that for free. That was really nice. And when I was saying that I was picking up outline for a friend, she was like, have you read Flights by Olga Tokarczuk? And I said, 
no, um, I have it on my Kindle, but I haven't read it. And she said it was just translated to, um, to Hebrew. So I bought that for Ahad, my partner, because I thought that maybe she would like it. Um, so I got her that. And then I also got her, actually the cover on that is really interesting. I'll show it to you. This is the cover of Flights. Um, Hebrew covers are notoriously bad, I must say. Um, but this is kind of an interesting, like very strange classical, looks like a classical oil painting. Um, so that's Flights. And then I also saw this on my way out and I was like, trying to tell myself not to buy anything for me just to buy things for others if i'm going to buy any books so i also got for ohad i saw that it's been translated also to hebrew uh the copenhagen trilogy by tova ditlifsen um they did a fine job on this cover the original cover is really really beautiful and it's like the similar a similar like it's the image just looks a little bit different and weirdly pixelated but anyway, I thought actually my partner would really love this. Um, so yeah, so that's my little haul. Just been sat at my little desk here. Um, actually like just with my schedule, like my uh, planner, my yearly planner open. Just like I am getting used to the um, freelance life, needing to really be on top of scheduling things I'm notorious for double booking myself on things because I don't know, I don't keep track of things that I agree to do. <laughs> uh, and now that I don't work full time where someone else is just sending me their schedule, so I need to like be on top of it and like write down everything that I'm doing. So I've been with my planner doing that. Very proud of myself. Going back to the bookstore, actually, um, because it's really short, I read this. And I sent her an email uh, saying like, thank you so much for giving it to me and that I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's kind of about dancing and performing and like puppetry. So, which is probably the reason why she gave it to me because she, know that it, she knows that I'm also a dancer. Um, and I wrote her that I just left my job and that I am, of course I want to keep working in my art form. Um, but additionally, like, I think I would like to work somehow with books more, um, which is tricky here because all the bookstores like are, they have an English section, but they're Hebrew books. So I don't assume that she would be interested in people working in her shop that are not, in, that are not like fluent Hebrew speakers or, or Hebrew readers. Um, I don't know how their computer system functions. I'm sure it's not in English. So I said kind of in this email that I sent her like that I would love to work there in some way if they, she ever needs like part-time workers or just like shelving books or if she even needs help like like she has amazing taste so I don't think that she needs any help but like I don't know curating the English section or I don't know I didn't really know but I just told her that I want to be around books more and if it can be like a part-time job it I think I would really enjoy it. I I don't have high hopes that something will work out, but um, I thought I would try. We still don't have a laundry machine here. It's in our old place, which this week it's like the official clearing out of that old apartment. So I'll be like retrieving everything from the old house slowly as we move through the week. But I'm gonna take this huge bag of laundry to the laundromat. Um, I used to do that a lot when I lived in Nashville, like take my book to the laundromat. That, I felt like that was my life. It was going to dance rehearsal. It was being like very underpaid and not having a washing machine and going to the laundromat and listening to music or reading. So I'm going to have a little nostalgic moment, <laughs> try to connect it to some form of joy and uh, go do this laundry and take my book. That's it. That's all that's half semi-interesting to share with you. Um, and after finishing Strega, which I spoke about in the last vlog, I, yeah, was just excited to get reading again and I wanted to read some fiction um, or like a good novel. So I picked up Summer by Ali Smith. Where is it? 
I love Ali Smith, but I it's like it was giving me major COVID um, book like themes. I think that's it is dealing with COVID. So um, I was like not sure that that's really the space that I want to read about. Not that it stresses me, but just like I'm not sure I care to read about something in that time like right now. So I did pick up a short story collection on my Kindle, um, also for Women in Translation, um, called Hit Parade of Tears by Izumi... Izumi, is that her name? Remember the last name. I'll put it here, the cover. Um, but like really got few pages in and then... This is the problem with reading before bed. I, I cannot be a night reader. For me, I'm a daytime reader. I'm a morning reader, especially. Like, the most reading I get done is if I don't have any plans in the morning, I can just wake up, like, um, make coffee and read, then I will read a lot. And by the time evening comes, I'm, like, tired, so I can't, I can barely stay awake. So I got, like, a few pages into the first story, and now I don't remember anything, I need to go back. But that's what I'm reading. I don't know what exactly this vlog will consist of in terms of reading material. So I'm just here with my glass of wine and I need a refill on very soon. And I wanted to tell you that I, um, have almost finished this so in the laundromat in which you saw me living my best life without ac in temperature 32 degrees celsius i did actually find it enjoyable somehow because i did quite a lot of reading luckily there was no one else there so i had the place to myself i think the play exists in 14 scenes and I read scene 5 to scene 13 so it's basically like the bulk of the book um I have one scene left the original play by Euripides I didn't have like a reference in my mind um to what it what the play is about and I never read it the original and then of course I there was one character that pops up here um Creon that like I wanted to you know, this is a modern retelling, right? So we're following like Medea and Jason from the original play, but we're following them like in, I don't know, contemporary London, what I assume is London, in first century domestic space. All of a sudden like Creon, the character, which is obviously from Greek myth. So I was like, okay, um, I need to maybe look up at least the characters and like how they relate to each other and then of course i was reminded that medea is the one is the like play where she murders her own children um so yeah forgot that huge detail that medea is like the most hated woman um because she's the mother that kills her own children and it's very cusk to retell a story about what society would deem as like the most hated woman. <laughs> I thought I heard Ohad speaking to me and then she said, maybe it was Jacob. He has a lot to say about Greek mythology. Um, in fact, he probably does. I was like, okay, yes. Like I do know Medea. I do know vaguely the story and kind of like, you know, the, the archetype of the bad mother would be Medea. So of course, Cusk is retelling this particular play. Love it. Yeah, loving it. I have just that one scene left. Um, and like I said, just spoiled it. If you don't know this play, she does um, murder her kids, and, along with others. <laughs> I just got to that part where the messenger character is like telling the audience um, through like a kind of big um, monologue about the fate of the other characters. So I just got there. I'll talk to you later. So that has been today's read.
did some work on the layout of the house, so I thought that I would pop on here and give an update. So we took the couches back from being separate, back to where they were originally when we came in, which is on one kind of L, um, which we feel like just is a bit better. The other one was nice, but it just didn't feel like it was very comfortable. Jacob is drinking water, so I'm going to wait for an intermission. And we moved, this desk used to be behind the, the couch with some books, but we moved it here. I had a problem with the yellow originally, but somehow it, it's bothering me less and less. And I think if I pop some other colors, um, it can look like intentional. Very cute, Jacob. So this is a really nice desk now to kind of like type at, edit videos, do work on the computer. This is um, like pulls out into a bed. It will probably go somewhere over here, but um, we're floating it now so we can put our feet on it when we're on the couch. But probably this will be a coffee table at some point. And then Ohad found these shelves on the street and she painted them pretty much the same silver color as there is on the couch. So we put that here and we stacked some books. That looks really cute. And then we added this table. There's this little place here, but uh, somehow it wasn't comfortable to sit and have meals at. It feels more like a breakfast nook and we felt like we wanted to have an actual table to eat at to have dinner so um yeah so we have this and it's also kind of like metal and industrial um so that is where we're at now everything is still obviously work in progress but it feels more homey Happy Monday. I'm snuggling with my poochie. Oh, the poochie boy. Watching CJ's um, Sunny's Bookstore tour and um, Q&A, loving it. You all watch CJ, I'm sure, but if you don't, of course, please go watch her. Um, and she just fucking opened her own real physical bookstore um in yuma arizona so if you're a viewer from yuma arizona you better be in sunny's spending your money i also think owning a bookstore could be like an incredible thing i would love that but i have absolutely no funds to do such a project <laughs> and i'm not sure i ever will to be honest um Maybe I'll just ask CJ to let me work a summer there once in my life so I can have that experience. Struggling with the lighting here, as always. I've finished Medea, um, and that's great because it's my book club pick. And the problem in the past with my book club was that I didn't ever finish my own books. Totally an issue. So I did finish Medea. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm uploading now the last um, reflection video. I spoke earlier, I think, in a clip about Hit Parade of Tears, uh, short stories by Izumi Suzuki. Um, but I was reminded that for Katie's book club, I should be reading The Lake by Banana Yoshimoto, which is also translated work. So um, I started reading that and let's just say it's triggering. Yeah, very, very triggering. Um, it's about uh, our main character, like, uh, has lost her mom. And the way that she's writing about it is super... <sighs> I'm very intrigued. I'm wondering kind of 
I've never uh, read anything by Banana Yoshimoto, so I'm not familiar with yeah her writing or her style um i know kitchen was really popular i have not read that so yeah i'm looking forward to um seeing where the book goes i i really know nothing about it i didn't even read the blurb like we read the blurb a small description of it like when we vote on every month's book with katie um but i don't even remember what that brief said so i know nothing about what i'm reading which is also fun ahad is taking a class mm. and then we need to figure out what to do for dinner mm. those days when you like find it hard to be an adult like to keep all your shit together and to be on your schedule and to have an animal and to have to fucking figure out dinner and to do your dishes I'm having that kind of day. I am contemplating going more blonde. I don't know what you guys think about that. I've been like pulling up some inspiration pictures to send my hairdresser um, to see if she will agree to like going full on, more full on blonde. This is nice, but I am, it's opened my appetite now for blonde, so. Let's see. All right, that's all I've got for you. I apologize to my British viewers. I think I really just wish I had a British accent. That's it. Now I'm just letting this roll and roll and roll with nothing. Hi everyone, so this is an update that we have received all the stuff from the new, from the old apartment. I will flip around and show you what a disaster the fucking house is now. So much shit. I've only had about three mental breakdowns today, but these are some fun boxes because they're full of books, full of books full of books, um, these two full of books. So that will be really fun to unpack. Hi. Hi, sweet. Hi, sweet, 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 sweet. So yeah, anyway, it's just slightly overwhelming to say the least. And just, we don't have enough space in this house and just certain things don't work as well as they did in the last place. Hi. So, um, also, I shaved the sides of my head. Uh, this side looks a bit better. This side I did a little bit too much, like too high. But I think it'll look better once the hair grows in a little bit because right now it looks really, really like sharp and crazy. It's just that period of time when, you know, I'm experimental and not satisfied and also having a quarter life crisis um, and changing my hair every week. And uh, we also got our bed, um, which is another huge dilemma because the bed is huge in comparison to this room. Like, as you can see, the bed is almost like the size of the whole room and there's just like nothing to do about that. Please excuse these side tables that Ohad tried to make that look like Casper the fucking ghost. So so yeah, it's been a day. It's been a day. I mean, poor Ohad had to do all of this alone because I was in a rehearsal. So she was with the movers all day doing all of that. Um, but we're not having the easiest time like unpacking. We were like really excited to get all of our stuff and now like I'm really overwhelmed by everything and like I'm I just like all of a sudden hate all of my furniture um so yeah I'll keep you updated on that but that's a bit where we're at not fun but I did have an Aperol spritz now happy hour down the street and I do think that that has done something to my mood so hopefully we'll get a, a lot more done 
tonight and tomorrow morning um, so that we can enjoy like the weekend um, not in what feels like a shipwreck house. I think that's all. Bye. Oh, we did get our washing machine as well. Very exciting so that I don't have to sit at the laundromat, even though I did enjoy that for the one day that I did it. Uh, we've got some plants um, that have been a nice addition here. We need to find a better lighting because there's supposed to be lights here and they just don't exist. And I don't even think that there's like an ability for power or anything there. So yeah, I'm looking for some kind of like light thing that I can put around here. Um, I need to see if Ikea has a good solution for that. Okay, I'm just unpacking this box of books. Wow, it's so heavy, I cannot even um, lift it. These are, what I wrote is Ben books and art books. So these are like just, you know, fiction, like The Lost Daughter, um, or not fiction, they're like just normal books. <laughs> and then I guess also I've got some art books, like this is a Sofika. Um, I've got Egon Chile in here. Um, so these are fun for just having on display. Books that I've read already, Hong Kong, The White Book, one of my favorites, my favorite book of last year, The Stillest Day by Josephine Hart. Um, a few shelves here for books. Um, and we can also stack books on this yellow desk. And then there's another little console here you can see that's built into the wall that now has a lot of like different little like perfumes and stuff in it but that can actually go somewhere else and books can go there because it's like it has um ends like made for books I think like it's a book it's a bookcase and I have a lot of books like as I was packing them I was like fuck <clears throat> but I've been thinking to possibly do um like a little English book sale because the city that I live in really has a very minimal selection of English books and they're so expensive it's it's better at the at the one big used bookstore but even then like the prices are not super low and also it's really you can find some gems but generally not like the most incredible selection um, I have gotten a lot of great things there, for example, like that one. Um, so I can't complain totally about that bookstore, but I think I would like to do a little sale of books in English that are like in really good condition that I've read that I just don't need to keep. I don't feel particularly emotional about holding on to books, um, even that I really liked. Um, I feel like they served me at a certain time and like, unless I annotated them a lot or I have a desire to reread them in the future, I don't necessarily need to hold on to them. So I think it can also be just a cute sale. Mm. And I need the money, to be honest, so. It'll be much nicer to show you in the daylight because it's just like much more aesthetically pleasing. But I'm trying as much as I can to put my books on these shelves um, and on the desk over there, which I've got like a few there, um, because I kind of want to leave this um, for Ohad's books if I can. So yeah, I'm now I'm working on this box. This is really fun. This has got like a mix. No, actually it looks like mostly books that I've already read. There's some of my faves here. Tana French, The Wellspring, Sharon Olds, Mary Rufel. What else have we got in here? Simple Passion, Any Oh No, Patty. No, that was a big no for me. 
I don't get the hype on Alice Munro. And then, no, actually, these are unread books. What's that? Fran Leibovitz. I love this book cover. By, ne by Nights in Chile, Roberto Bolano. Very, very weird book. Um, the beginning is super strong, but then it goes kind of downhill for me. My sweetie. I love you. He's like, what the fuck? of them are here on this um, little shelving thing. <laughs> it's the morning, I can't speak. We finally got our table um, and my leftover books that didn't fit here, I also put along here because there's some storage um, on the couch, which I thought this is kind of cute. And then as well at the desk, um, I put some more. So that's all of them. Art books are here. Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically all the books unpacked. And from this side you see more like the colors of the books, if that's more the vibe you like. Put some um, magazine. I won't show that to you because it's an inappropriate picture that YouTube does not want me to show online. This is our little corner here. We still have a lot of work to do. We're gonna hang this uh, really beautiful print by Eva Rubinstein, which I, I actually found on the street. Um, we're gonna hang it up here. I think that will be really, really pretty. So anyway, this is the update. Looking great. Saturday, made myself a tea. We're out of coffee, um, so it is tea today. Well, I really need to shave. And then this, I'm serving boy today. Serving boy. I wanted to con rhinestones together. I wanted to just congratulate you if you made it through this video. I've been editing, and I think it's about like 45 minutes already. So this is a full episode on Netflix. Um, thank you if you were able to survive that. Um, so I came just to end the video. <laughs> I think that's enough for one time. Also just wanted to say that I have DNF'd The Lake by Banana Yoshimoto, the um, book I was speaking about earlier that like was triggering me. Um, triggering me also in a in a good way like it started really on the first page i was highlighting like almost the whole page so i was like that's that's a really good sign and then i just felt like it started to make me feel really icky and i don't know like the passages where she would speak in the story about like her mother passing away and stuff were really strong for me and i would be like really into it and then when she would, the main character would speak about this boy that she's, this man that she's dating. Something felt off to me about that. Something it didn't hit right. Um, I think it's like, because she started to speak about subjects like, like sexual abuse or assault, um, but like in a really not nuanced way that made me feel really icky, like, 
or almost a bit fe fetishizing it like oh there's this character of like this boy who's kind of mysterious and like he also has some real issues and he has a hard time with intimacy maybe something really horrible happened to him maybe he was abused sexually as a child you know and things like that first of all I can make those connections in my head I don't need you to to spell it out to me and then when you do it feels really gross and a bit much and maybe I, I didn't give the book enough time like to reveal itself as more nuanced but it did not feel nuanced enough for me in those subjects for me to continue. So I gave, I gave that a DNF. I was like, I have so many books. And I'm reading now Asylum Road by Olivia Sujic. I got this copy from Renee um, from So I Read This Book. And she also left her own annotations in here, which is amazing. Cause like I would go to highlight something and I'm like, oh, she already underlined it. Or like she even made like a little note on the side. And that's really fun. I love that about books, especially when it comes from like friends, because um, it's like getting in their thoughts while they were reading it. So anyway, I'm I th not halfway, but almost. Um, so good so far. Really anxiety inducing um, and slightly made it uncomfortable for me to sleep it got in my head in really weird ways but it's really good so yeah maybe I will talk about this in the next video but this is my current read and I'm loving it so I'm happy that I have moved on from the the, the lake okay that's all uh, thank you for watching and uh, I shall see you later okay Bye.